Hello and welcome to Revit for BIM Training Seminars, Session 4, Project Setup. This is Part 3, Mass Modeling from Images. OK, so following on from the previous video, we inserted three images of a sketch design into the mass modeling environment. And I've placed one on the plan, one from the southern elevation, and one from the east elevation and I'm going to work through how um, and I'm going to work through how to make a mass model using these sketches as a guide now I'm not going to be 100% accurate with this they are sketch designs you can see in the mass you can see in the plan I'm not exactly 100% accurate with my orientation but they really do help in creating a mass model. One of the things you find with this software is quite often the knowledge of the software will drive the design and that's not really how it should work. You should be using pen and paper and your brain to drive the design and then trying to get the software to match what comes out of your imagination. So that's why I'm suggesting using paper drawn sketches to drive the design. Okay, so let's get into this. Um, first off, I'm going to start in the plan. I'll use a sketch line. I'm going to start at my origin. Seen as my origin is the point I know is correct on all three views. So I'll click up here, take it to about 13 meters. Now if you know your dimensions at this point you can be quite accurate. Come down, join there and go back. Now all I've done is draw a rectangle. Possibly you can see it there. My form has got this strong line going across it and I'm going to need to do and introduce quite a few twists. The amount of modeling you do at this point is a bit of a learning curve as to how far to model it as a mass and then what you would do in the project. Okay, I'm going to pick up this line and come across. Now I'm quite a long way off from the sketch at this point, but that's fine. I'm going to land that there. Okay, so I've now defined that line using some of my snap guides to make sure the end of that line there ties with the back face of the building there. It's pretty hard to see while the sketches are on. Um, the way I like to do this is simply jump to a 3D view because in the 3D view you don't get to see the sketches so I can see what's going on. Okay so I've got a square with a line going across it. Some of the tools you can use to neaten this up would be I'm going to firstly split this line in half because I'm going to use one end of it there and one end of it there and I'm going to simply use my trim extend to corners extend that, extend that, you see by clicking on the two lines I want to meet I automatically get that corner you click on the lines you want to keep when you're using this trim do it again that corner to that corner, that extends that out and I want to keep that line, I want to keep that line to tidy that up. Okay, so I've now got a footprint of the building. Once I've got that, select it, create a form from it. Now I automatically see how high that's going. There's my sketch. I know that this should be 7000 mil, so I can just type that in and you see it took me to that point there. Now that's grey and the image is behind so instead of being on consistent colours I'm going to go to wireframe and I can start seeing through to my sketch behind. Okay, depending on the design you need to do a bunch of different moves to make this look like your building or your desired building and if you want to go back 
to some of the earlier mass modeling videos you'll get some more tools I'm not going to go back into some of those now but you'll you'll get an idea of some of the options and some of the ways you can tweak this shape to get it to the form you want firstly I'm going to rotate this roof now rotating the roof can be a relatively tricky I've selected it in 3d just to make sure I've got it right and I'm going to jump to that front elevation I've still got it selected I'm going to go to rotate I'm going to drag my point to there click once on the horizontal and click once 12 degrees okay that's twisted it you can see that's in the 3d now one of the things that annoys me at this point is I've lost the vertical on all of these faces it's maintained it on that face and that face but as I've twisted around that axis I've lost the vertical I can deal with that in a few ways I could have made this form by creating a profile on the floor and then creating another profile above it that was already tilted and then created a form between the two so lofting between two profiles but I'll show you another way of doing it I can align to some of these reference planes which I know are vertical using my align tool select the work plane select the face and that straightens it up now I need to create some new work planes so I'm going to go back into the plan to do that going to select it, copy it, pick it up from there I'll have one in line with that copy it again I'll get one in line with the end there and that should be enough work planes to tidy those horizontal faces up use my line tool, select that and just select that one edge and that's fine, I'm not bothering to lock these down at the moment select that work plane, select that edge there okay so that's tidied all of those up next I'm going to jump back into my plan view turn on wireframe so I can see the plan underneath I've got this raised area here which is going to be glazed eventually above the cafe and kitchen so I'm going to insert that into the model if I select that viewport start drawing and make sure I'm drawing on the work plane not drawing on a face if I start drawing on a face it's going to find the top of the building and uh, you're going to get out of shape okay so I'm going to do this very very roughly you can take your time on this if needs be now it might be hard to see on the video but I've picked up that line there, it's given me the hint that I'm in line with that. So I need to find the end of there and join my form back up. Select it, create a form. And you can see in the 3D if I turn off shading, I've got hold of a form. Let's pull that up and over the top. Okay, my form needs to be rotated in two directions, so sideways and backwards. So this can be a little bit tricky. I think I'll do it by eye for now. I tend to come in here get it to the right height now you may have some very specific heights you've got in mind for your design I'm just going to do this by eye just for speed what I'm trying to achieve is picking up that angle and that angle you can see that in my elevation I'm going to tab through to get that point 
we'll pull that down as well and it'll snap there so that's not looking too bad I've got that working on a few different planes let me just check okay that'll do for demonstration purposes at the moment I've got two forms one within the other you can see that because it's going to the base if I use join I can select one form select the other form and that ties them together so finally I can further manipulate this by moving up and down just change that form a little bit I'm not sticking to my original design fully uh, you'll probably find that the sketch design is often a good place to start if I need an exact dimension it's going to be relatively tricky to do now but you need to be in one of the 2D views you can use your aligned dimension tool tab through to get that I should be able to drive it say in 2000 so now I've got an exact dimension of 2000 okay if you haven't picked up WT Windows tile gets all of the windows that you've got open at the moment or you can go to view and then tile there's the shortcut in the title there okay this model is almost ready to be used I can still see a few little issues this edge here isn't vertical so if I go back to my floor plan copy sorts that out. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that. I can see a few little issues around here and if I'd have gone a little bit slower that might not have happened. I can try and using my align tool seeing whether I can align that line that line. Oh, that worked. Good. Okay. So the align tool is very very powerful and helps a lot. Okay, so I'm happy with that in the next video we'll load that into a project and start using it you can further pin down the design using voids starting to cut into this but this is enough to drive the model we can do that kind of editing afterwards it comes with experience to know where you can stop mass modeling and go into the project environment for this purpose I think this is far enough if it isn't we can always come back so if I save as a family object mass from images for project save that so now with it being saved I can load this into a project and if I need to I can come back and edit it Okay, we'll carry on in the next video. Thank you.